How's it going everybody? Welcome once again to No DQ and a video, the official Q&A video series for NoDQ.com. Got a lot of questions here from spring.me slash Aaron Rift, so let's get right down to it. First one today comes from Del Rio Fan 74 Hey Aaron, what did you think of AJ Styles' work to shoot promo on Impact this week? Also, what are your thoughts on Dixie Carter turning heel, and is this going to be a ripoff of WWE's corporation angle? First off, I think turning Dixie Carter heel is something that is long overdue, and I really feel that it's something that should have been done. And um, when you look at Dixie Carter and TNA, a lot of fans look at her in a negative light, so I think that you're going with the tide here. The fans want to boo Dixie Carter, so why not let them? As far as how the segment went, I was definitely intrigued by it. I thought it was an interesting ending to Impact, and when the lights went out, when Dixie Carter cut the mic, the crowd was booing like crazy. So I thought that, um, at least based off of this one segment, it was a, su a success. Um, with that being said, I wish that Dixie's acting was just a little bit better. I thought that, I don't know, something about her acting just isn't very convincing to me personally. But we'll see how things go with this. And um, it is very similar to the CM Punk storyline with the pipe bomb. And, you know, clearly TNA's trying to recreate that. And, um, you know, Dixie Carter kind of had this Stephanie McMahon vibe to her. Um, as long as they can do something unique with this storyline and, and make it different from the usual WWE storylines and the usual work shoot um, storylines, um, you know, might, might add some interest to Bound for Glory and make people uh, more intrigued about ordering the pay-per-view. Um, it's just weird because... Heels are usually supposed to lie, and, and the stuff she was saying about AJ, how, um, you know, he, he hasn't had a five-star match in years, and um, he, he, he's, he's not worth what he's being paid and, and all that stuff, and the only reason that he has a job is because she, she bought the company. Um, that kind of stuff, I mean, it, it, it's pretty much true. So, uh, you know, when, when she's a heel, she's, to be going, she's supposed to be going out there and... Um, saying things that the fans know is a bunch of crap. But what she was saying about AJ, um, you know, it, it's hard to argue that. And, uh, you know, what AJ said about her, too, I mean, I mean that's true as well. Um, so, yeah, it'll definitely be interesting to see where things go with the storyline. And it was the, uh, um, I thought, the best cliffhanger for an Impact episode in a while. I'm definitely curious to see what happens on the next show. All right, next question here. Do you see Hogan signing an extension, contract extension, at the last minute? Or do you see him leaving TNA? If so, um, if so, what, what do you say are the short and long-term ramifications for TNA? As far as Hogan leaving, I think Hulk Hogan is going to go where he can make the money. If WWE shows real interest in bringing him back and doing something for WrestleMania 30... I could see Hogan making the jump and going back to WWE, but if WWE doesn't appear to have all that much interest and they don't want to pay him that much, um, he might try to work out something with TNA, and you know Dixie would love to keep Hogan around, and I'm sure Spike TV would like to keep Hogan around just because of the Hulk Hogan name value, because Hulk Hogan is a name that, that everybody knows. Everybody worldwide knows who Hulk Hogan is. And, um, you know, I, I, sometimes I feel that TNA and Spike, they, they, uh, they invest more than they should in Hulk Hogan. But, I mean, he is the biggest name of all time, arguably. So, you know, I, I, I could see them uh, offering him something to stay. And, you know, it's going to come down to where Hogan can get the best deal. So, right now, I, I think it could go either way. I, I think it's a coin, a coin flip. And um, if Hogan was to leave TNA... Um, Honestly, I don't think it would make that much of a difference. You know, the ratings are going to do what they're going to do, the 1.0 um, in the pay-per-view buy rates. It's not like Hogan's wrestling on those pay-per-views, so, um, you know, he's not really doing anything for the pay-per-view buys. And um, attendance-wise, you know, shows are drawn 2,000, 3,000 people. So um, I don't think it matters all that much if Hogan is there. I mean, the real value, like I said, 
is the name Hulk Hogan. So, um, you know, TNA's got to figure out, um, you know, what he's worth. And, um, you know, Hogan's got to see which side will give him the best deal. All right, this one comes from Nick Lombardi 9. Hey, Aaron, love no DQster or loyal no DQster. Here's two quick ones. What do you think WWE should do with CM Punk and Paul Heyman in their feud? I'm honestly not excited about where it's going. And also, what do you think WWE should do with John Cena when he comes back? Please answer in video. Um, regarding the CM Punk and Heyman feud, um, you know, I, I think that they've invested a lot into it, you know, with the Brock Lesnar feud and now uh, CM Punk and Curtis Axel and CM Punk and Ryback. So, I mean, it's going to go on uh, for at least a couple more months. Um, you know, I I, uh, I can see where you're coming from here, not being excited about where it's going. I mean, CM Punk and Ryback, I mean, yeah. Uh, not really crazy about seeing that feud. But, um, you know, CM Punk and Paul Heyman have had some really good uh, verbal exchanges, and um, those have been extremely entertaining. And um, I, I do think that you, you, it, it's getting close to the point where you need to wrap it up and... Um, put CM Punk in another program, maybe get him back in the WWE title picture um, in the near future. But, you know, I, I think that they will try to drag this out at least for another month or two. And um, as far as what to do with John Cena, um, you know, I think a lot of people would say turn him heel when he comes back. But um, I, I think WWE should do what they feel is going to make them the most money. And uh, most likely that means John Cena coming back Brand new, bright colored t-shirt, um, doing his thing, and uh, headlining WrestleMania. So, you know, I think that's what they're probably going to do with them. And, you know, if I was running a business, uh, running WWE, I would probably do the same thing. All right, this one comes from K.O. Cox 20. Hey, Aaron, love the show. So my question today is, would you say the Undertaker streak has more prestige than the world titles nowadays? And you say titles plural. So I'm guessing you're saying both titles. Um, yeah, one could definitely argue that. Uh, you know, the Undertaker streak is the one thing that has really remained pure. Um, they haven't done any um, anything cheap with the streak, any kind of gimmick where it was in controversy. Um, you know, Undertaker every year decisively beats his opponent. And um, it, it's one thing that ha ha hasn't uh, been tainted. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think the streak is a very important part of WrestleMania. Um, I don't think it's critical to WrestleMania doing a huge pay-per-view buy rate every year, but it certainly doesn't hurt to have Undertaker on the WrestleMania card uh, defending the streak. All right, this one comes from Kayfabe Candy S. Has WWE already stopped giving a crap about the Wyatts? Um, I think WWE stopped caring about them when the crowd didn't really care about them. The problem here is that, I mean, the gimmick is really cool and it's unique. Um, but, you know, I was there at SummerSlam. I was there at Raw the next night. Um, you know, the crowd was uh, clapping along to the song and uh, the, 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 the group got a big pop. But once the bell rang and, and Bray Wyatt was in there wrestling, crowd was dead. I mean, you could hear a pin drop in the arena. They did not care about seeing Bray Wyatt in the ring. So, you know, I'm sure WWE took notice of that, and, um, you know, they, they keep doing these, uh, you know, they're doing more video packages than actually having him in the ring, which, quite frankly, is is uh, perhaps the best way to go right now and, and keep him out of the ring as much as possible. I think that that's the best way uh, you can prolong the gimmick is to, to, you know, play to the strengths, you know, show the promos and, and you know, do all that cool stuff with the video editing and uh, keep him out of the ring as much as possible. All right, this one comes from Swag M8. Please answer in video. Do you think WWE should bring back Cyber Sunday? I enjoyed seeing these pay-per-views and thought they were a great addition to the lineup. Um, I have talked about Cyber Sunday before in previous videos. I know I have, uh, so I'll say it one more time here quickly. On paper, Cyber Sunday is a great idea. The problem is that fans like to know in advance what they're paying for. They don't like this idea where you know, it, it's going to be a random match and you're, you're not going to know what you're paying for. Um, and, uh, you know, every year they did Cyber Sunday, the buy rates just weren't very high because of that, uh, because of the fact that people um, aren't knowing what, what they're going to be paying for. So I, I, I think that that's what's flawed about Cyber Sunday. 
And um, I think it's better off to just do what they're doing now with the, you know, the interactive polls and that sort of thing uh, on Raw, on free TV, not doing a pay-per-view. Would CM Punk versus Daniel Bryan as the main event of WrestleMania 30 draw? Not on its own. And, uh, you know, you look at the SummerSlam pay-per-view buy it, which just came in, and uh, it was disappointing. And the, the two main event matches had CM Punk and Daniel Bryan in them. Um, so, you know, I I as great as those guys are, um, at the mainstream level, I mean, they're not at John Cena's level. And I know a lot of people watching this video don't like to hear that, but that is the reality. Um, can they be in a key match at WrestleMania? Absolutely. I would definitely do it. I mean, that would be a great match to sell the internet fans. But when you're trying to sell WrestleMania 30 um, to, to a worldwide audience and to people that don't normally watch WWE, keep in mind, um, WWE is trying to cater to people that don't even know what Ring of Honor is. They've never seen CM Punk or Daniel Bryan wrestle in front of 100 people. Um, so, you know, WWE has to cater the, to those people. And John Cena is the kind of guy that draws to your average fan, your average casual viewer who, you know, might think wrestling is still somewhat real. And uh, they'll tune on their television and, you know, they want to see something very entertaining. So when they see John Cena coming out acting like Superman, you know, that, that draws them in. And uh, that, that's just the way it is. But, yeah, CM Punk and Daniel Bryan, in, in terms of drawing the Internet fans, I mean, that's a perfect matchup. That's a dream matchup for WrestleMania, and I would say do it. All right, last one today comes from James Ryan 37401 Hey, Aaron, what do you think of Tyson Kidd? I believe he could sort of be like a Ziggler when he returns, a guy that has so much skill but does not get pushed. Um... I'm actually surprised um, that he hasn't been back on TV yet. Um, you know, I know he, he's just starting to make his comeback. He's doing the house shows, I guess, to get off the ring rust. Um, but, you know, with the success of Total Divas, um, it only makes sense to bring him back now and, uh, you know, play off of the success of Total Divas and, and uh, give him a big push now coming off uh, the momentum from that TV show. So, um, you know, I'm expecting that any time now, He'll be back on Raw, and he will get some sort of push, uh, you know, at least based off of the success of the Total Diva show, which is kind of funny. You would think that because of his wrestling skills alone, he would get the chance, but no, it's because of Total Divas that, um, you know, he, he might end up getting a big opportunity. But regardless, um, you know, I, ho I hope he does get back on TV and uh, does get the opportunity that he uh, definitely deserves. All right, that'll do it for this edition of No DQ and a Video. Thanks as always for watching. Subscribe, youtube.com slash nodqcw. Share this video on Facebook and Twitter. Um, show anybody that you know watches wrestling. Show them this video um, and keep spreading the word. I appreciate all the support from you guys. And I'll see you next time for more no DQ and a video.